here with my life as Geek Guy. Welcome to my channel and in today's video, I'm going to be doing my absolute best to find the most purple eyeshadow that I have in my entire eyeshadow palette collection. You guys should see the array of eyeshadow palettes in front of me right now. It's very rarely that I get to pull all my eyeshadow palettes out of my collection and just lay them out. And you know what? Looking at them in this particular layout and array just brings me so much joy. I think often I forget the amount of makeup that I have and I just forget to bring it out and play with it sometimes. And so that's what I'm doing in today's video. This isn't even all my eyeshadow palettes in my entire collection. These are just the palettes that have purples in them. So that's what this video is. I'm going to be doing my best to look for the most purplest, pigmented, blendable, smooth purple eyeshadow in my entire collection. I'm going to be making this a series so you'll be seeing a lot more videos like this. So trying to find the bluest eyeshadow in my collection, trying to find the reddest or the most yellow or the most orange, so on and so forth. I don't know if you guys knew this but finding the most vibrant, neon, blendable, smooth colors, especially in the blues, the oranges, the reds, yellows, and purples, it's a little bit difficult to find one that is very pigmented, that isn't chalky or powdery or any of that. And so I've made it my mission to find the most pigmented one of that particular color. And today we're going to be looking for purple. So without further ado, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'm just going to jump straight and get my fingers into all these eyeshadow palettes. Alright, I'm going to be getting my hair out of my face because for one, it's a million degrees in my filming room right now. You know that when the hair is coming up, Things are getting serious. I already know I'm going to be getting eyeshadow absolutely everywhere, so having my hair up and out of my face is definitely going to help a lot. First of all, let's start with the Morphe 35U eyeshadow palette. I have had this one for years. When Morphe first started out getting big in the industry, I bought these palettes. I have about 12 of them. And these are the 35 shadow family in the old packaging. That's how old these palettes are. Now I already kind of know which purples are going to be chalky and not very nice. But for the sake of this video, I think I'm going to try and go in order of what I think will be the most purple. But anyway, I might still be surprised. I haven't played with these purples in years. I actually think I need to scooch you guys in a little bit closer so you can see exactly how these shadows are performing. So this is the first one. It's not very bright or pigmented. It is fairly smooth though, but I feel like this sort of shade would blend away and fade very, very quickly. All right, this one is the Morphe 35P. It has a few shades of purple. I'm gonna stick to the more brighter, vibrant type of purples. The more grayish, taupey type of purples, I'm not really that interested in. I'm just trying to find the brightest, most vibrant one. I'm just gonna swatch maybe these five right here. Okay, that's a very beautiful, shimmery purple. Not very vibrant. It's very silvery and cool toned. It's a lot more pink than purple. I feel like that one's a little bit more of a duochrome. I'm having to go in with a second layer and I'm really pressing my finger into that shadow there. I love the shade of that one, but I don't feel like it's very, very vibrant. Okay, this one is a matte shadow and I'm really pressing my finger in that one. Let's see how this matte one goes. I feel like matte ones are going to be a lot more patchy than shimmery ones will be. Yep, that one's fluffing absolutely everywhere. I've always said that purples is a color that is very, very difficult to formulate without having it go patchy or flaky or powdery, especially matte ones. And that's a matte one right there. I don't feel like it's too bad. Swatching is one thing, applying on the eyes is another. And if my memory serves me right, that one didn't apply very nicely. I feel like you could make it work possibly if you really took your time to pat and blend and build up that color. I'm just gonna go in with a second layer. I suppose as matte purples go, that's not too bad. That might work actually. That might actually work. Now this palette is the Morphe 35B. It's got a few brights in there, a couple, maybe three purples, and these three purples are all matte shades, so we'll see how we go with these matte. Already feels very, very powdery. 
that is powdery as all get out and not very much pigment at all. Okay, this one feels very, very chalky to the touch. Very dry and quite rough actually. I feel like this particular shade would fluff right off with a brush. So I'm just going to take a brush and pick up some of that same shadow with a brush and see how that applies. Mm, it's fluffing absolutely everywhere. Look at that. It doesn't look too bad as a swatch, but swatching and applying on the eyes are two different things. Now this one's a bit more of an indigo purple, but we'll see how we go with this one anyway. This one's also very powdery and dry and chalky and rough. Okay, that's actually not too bad. I should probably also, also say that I actually don't have anything on my arms at the moment. I only have moisturizer on my skin right now. No concealer, no foundation, nothing. So there's really essentially nothing for that shadow to stick to. So if there were a foundation or a concealer under it, it would probably apply a whole lot better as well. But let's also remember that swatches aren't really any indication of how a purple is going to apply on the eyes. The point of this video is really just to find the most vibrant purple. Now those purples there are really after only several layers of really pressing in that product. So I don't feel like they would really apply very nicely or evenly smoothly or blend very nicely nicely at all to the eyes. Alright, moving on to my Jaclyn Hill eyeshadow palette. Until I was planning for this video, I completely forgot that I had this palette in my collection. I don't think I've even ever even used this palette on my channel. There is only one purple shadow in this palette, so let's have a swatch of that one. This one is a shimmery purple, and let's see how this one goes. For a shimmery slash metallic shade, that doesn't feel very smooth. Okay, that one swatched alright. Most metallics will swatch okay, considering they have a fair bit more oil in them than mattes do. Okay, that one is quite pigmented, I must say. It's not a very vibrant purple though, I'm gonna go in with a second layer. It's more of a muted gray purple. Moving on to my next Morphe palette. This one is the 39S Such a Gem eyeshadow palette. From looking at it, it's like, oh, all purples. But if you really look at it closely, there's really one, two, three, four, five, maybe five shadows that will pass as bright, vibrant purples. So we're gonna, maybe possibly this one as well. It comes off as a bit gray on camera, but we're gonna swatch maybe these ones here. Okay, this one feels very hard. It doesn't feel very soft at all. I'm really digging my finger in that one. Okay, that was patchy. That is patchy AF, but then again, that's not how we apply shadows, so let's just blend that into the skin. For a shimmery shadow, that's patchy AF. All right, let's just move on from that one. <laughs> that one's really nice periwinkle purple. Ooh. That is not very uh, smooth at all. I'm dipping my finger in it again. Okay, that the pigment in that is almost non-existent. It's not even that it's a very light purple, it's just that it's watched very, very patchy and I was really digging my finger into that. It's hardly even there. It's showing up on camera like it's there, but if I look on my skin, it's really hardly even there. Alright, now all the shimmers in this palette I feel like are very very hard and don't have very much oil content in them. Like I'm really digging my finger in there. Looks very patchy. Ooh, it's hardly even there. Okay, now that shadow is terrible. I cannot even, I'm moving on. No, nah, that shadow is a no-go. Alright, this one here is a matte one. Ooh, that was very powdery. Wow, this newer 39S palette is so much worse than their 35P palette, like, and that one is old, and this one is fairly new, I only got this one this year. Nah, no bueno, no bueno. Let's see if that one applies with a brush. Look at this. If you're trying to blend that purple, it would fluff absolutely everywhere. Yeah, I don't know about this 39S palette, guys. It's very pretty to look at, but... The purples, not too sure about them. All right, now for this last purple in the 39S palette. It feels very firm, but powdery. Fair bit chalky too. Going in again. 
It's a bit smooth, but I'm not quite sure that it would be a shadow that would be easy to build up. It's a pretty color, but not too sure about that one. Okay, moving on. This one is the James Charles palette. Now he has these two purples right here. Let's start with a matte one, shall we? So pressing my finger into there. It feels a lot smoother and less chalky. Still feels rather dry though. Okay, now that's watching very smooth. Like I can feel the difference there. It's still fairly patchy, powdery. Mm, it's very patchy here. This is the third layer. I'm going in. I'm going in ham with that purple. Oh, that's patchy. See that? That is very patchy. I feel like purples are incredibly difficult to formulate and this swatch session is really showing me that because so far a lot of these purples, they look pretty swatched but I have applied many of these on my eyes and I've been very disappointed with many of them. This one's more of a shimmery one and it feels a lot more oily and smooth. I feel like metallic purples will swatch a lot nicer because it has a fair bit more oil content in them than mattes do. So I'm just really picking that up on my finger. Okay, that's pretty. Again, I feel like this is a shade that you would have to really build up in order to see the pigmentation pay off. That's really, really pretty. All right, I think I'm gonna have to find a new area on my body. I think I'll start swatching it along here. Okay, now this palette is an old D. I've had this since the beginning, like the absolute beginning of my YouTube channel, even before I started back up. Like, I think it was just over two, a year and a bit ago now. No, this was when I first started my channel back four years ago. And I created an, a rainbow eyeshadow look using this palette. And it has, I wanna say three purples. This whole row is probably purple. This probably is a bit more gray. So I'm just gonna swatch these three. It is a fairly old palette as well. So I'm not getting my hopes up too high on the quality of these shadows by now, but I'm really just keeping it for sentimental purposes because I've had it for so long. <laughs> okay, first I'm gonna pick up this purple right. That's not purple, <laughs> that one is. It still feels pretty good even considering how old this palette is. I reckon I shall swatch along here so that I don't have to hold my arm in too weird of an angle when I'm taking my thumbnail. <laughs> okay, that actually swatches beautifully and it's very, very vibrant purple as well. That's actually surprised me. I feel like that purple is a lot more vibrant and swatched a whole lot better than some of the shimmers in my 39S palette, like for real? And this one is four years old, if not five. Actually, I think it's six. <laughs> okay, really had to press though to get that shimmer to spread and ain't no way I'd be pressing that hard on my eyelids. Okay, I'm gonna take some of this one here. Obviously, this won't be a very vibrant purple, but I just wanna get my finger into it, see what it feels like, see how it applies. Ooh, that's pretty. That's very, very uh, smooth too. Kind of fluffing everywhere, but I did dig my finger into that a fair bit. Okay, that's a very smooth shimmer right there. But, and I think this might be because it's also a very old palette, but the more I rub it in, and it's moving the skin underneath this other shadow here, that one's actually flaking off. So I don't feel like the longevity of the shadows is going to be there. And just taking that last purple there in the palette, it's a very pale metallic purple. Not a very vibrant purple, it's almost more of a silvery metallic. That's a pretty palette, like when it was brand new, it was one of my favorites. It's all foiled eyeshadows in this palette. I loved it when I first got it and it's still one of my favorite palettes to look at and just remember when I was young and new and starting out in makeup. <laughs> Next is this other BH Cosmetics palette. This one is the Weekend Festival palette. I don't think I've used this one much on my channel at all. I've used it to create a purple pink eyeshadow look, but nothing really out there. There's only one purple in this one, so let's just do this one. Now this is what these shadows felt like when it first came out. The reason why this one is so powdery, I feel like, is because it's so old. This one is a little bit old as well, but not as old as that one. I love the way that feels on my finger, actually. It's very silky. Okay, a little bit patchy. Okay, a lot of it patchy. It's not a very um, thick pigment. Going in with a second layer. 
It's a very almost not there type of pigment. That one would fade right off as soon as you've applied it on the eyelids. Not bad, not the best one either. The next one are these Makeup Geek Single Eyeshadows now. This is another one I've had for literal years. Almost as long as this palette. So these ones might be already a little bit patchy because they are that old. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna swatch them anyway because these are purples I have in my eyeshadow palette collection. This one's called Center Stage. It's a little bit firm, might be because it's old. I just want to fill in this space down here. For a foiled eyeshadow, it's not very pigmented. Not a fan of that one. The next one is called Daydreamer, also from Makeup Geek. Also fairly firm, might be because of its age, so don't mind that. But as far as color and vibrancy goes, it's more of, again, of a silvery purple. I've got a few of these silvery purples in my collection, hey. Not a huge fan of that one either. This one is called Caitlyn Rose. Okay, that one feels like it's gonna be patchy. Yeah, that was one swatch. Second swatch, still a bit patchy. Third swatch, now it's just flaking everywhere. For metallic, it's not very, uh, it's a little bit underwhelming. Okay, this one is called Masquerade. Wow, I can feel the age in these shadows. I really got my finger in there. Have a swatch of that one. Okay, I don't know if it's the shadow that's quite firm or it's old or it's just the shadow itself, but flaking everywhere. It looks patchy in person as well. It's a pretty color though, very pretty color. I like the purples that shift a bit to, to the pink side as well. Okay, that's pretty. It's almost like this shade here. This is the one from the BH Cosmetics palette. It's almost a bit pink. I like this one though, it's a lot more vibrant. All right, moving on to a little, just a tad bit more high end. This one is the Natasha Denona Lila palette. You have no excuse. You are Natasha Denona. You should be performing. Okay, it's a very smooth metallic. I just didn't like the way that it applied on my eyelid at all. It swatches beautifully though, in a very, very pretty color. But when I applied this on my eyelids, it just didn't do it for me. But it's an all right palette. But for the price, I don't think so. I actually don't remember if it was this one I didn't like or the Sunrise palette. I think it might be the Sunrise palette that I didn't really like. Actually, yeah, I think it was this one. I take it back what I said about you, Lila, but still. Still, for the price that this palette costs, I still don't think it's worth the money. You can get some other more vibrant purples from other cheaper palettes. Although looking at all the other swatches, you can tell that this is a more higher quality purple shadow, but still I don't think it's worth the price tag that this palette has. Not at all, not at all. We've got a few more to go. Right, this one is the Jeffree Star Dollbreaker Eyeshadow Palette. We've got two purples in this one. This one in the shade Gumdrop and this one in the shade Bite Me. So let's have a swatch. Very, very soft, smooth, buttery shadows. Um, really getting a lot of kickback from that matte shade Gumdrop. Okay, for a matte purple, that's very, very pigmented, but it's also very, very powdery. But I think that might just be the nature of the purple. It seems that purple is just a naturally powdery pigment. That's a very pretty color though. Very pretty color, I like that. And for a matte, that's very vibrant. Now that's really pretty. I love that purple. That is beautiful and smooth and gorgeous. Now this one's in the shade Bite Me. Ooh, now that is a smooth purple. Be interested to see how this one performs next to that Natasha Denona one right there. It's slightly a different shade, but it feels like the shimmer might be just as smooth. I have used this purple on my eyes as well and I don't remember exactly how it performed but it's it's working pretty good. It's kind of powdery but as far as colors go it's very very vibrant and it's not patchy. I think essentially what I'm looking for is just a purple that isn't patchy and so far these two are winning. Jeffree Star for the win! But we're not done yet. <laughs> the next one is the Zulu palette from Juvia's Place. From what I remember in my experience with this palette, it wasn't very good. This purple was patchy AF. Even the swatch on my finger is patchy. I'm running out of room here. Yep, see that? and it's flaking right off, picking up a bit more there. But I feel like the bristles of a brush would take this right off. And for a shadow that's matte, you really want to apply that with a brush. But even with my finger, where it's supposed to be able to press that pigment into the skin, 
it's really just fluffing everywhere. I do love Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes, but uh, this purple ain't it, sis. Now I'm taking the Juvia's Place Warrior palette. This one has a very beautiful purple in the center there. I actually haven't used this palette before. I've still yet to create a video using this palette on my channel, so you can stay tuned for that. But this purple feels very smooth compared to the purple in the Zulu palette. Hopefully it applies just as smoothly. It feels more like a pressed pigment than an eyeshadow, really. Okay, that is patchy. Okay, if that swatches like that with a finger, imagine with a brush. The brush would just take it right off. Okay, no, uh-uh. Nah, that purple ain't it, sis. Look, you can see the patchiness there. I'm pretty sure you are sick of that word patchy by now. Next, this one is the Queen Palette by Juvia's Place. This one is more of a gray undertoned muted type of purple, and it's also a matte. Let's see how that applies next to the other purples from Juvia's Place. That's also very patchy. Nope, nope, not this one. Juvia's Place does do a lot of things right, especially when it comes to packaging, pricing, and other colors, but unfortunately, purple is not one of them. All right, moving on. This one is the Magic Palette by Juvia's Place. This one has two, well, that's probably more of an indigo purple. I won't swatch that one. It actually looks more blue than purple, but I am gonna swatch this one called Faso. Now, this is the only shimmery purple that I have swatched from Juvia's Place. All the others were mattes, and they didn't perform very nicely at all, so maybe this shimmery purple might redeem itself. Okay. Pretty. Oh, actually, that is very pretty. I have used this purple on my eyes before and really, really love the way that applied. That is a gorgeous purple shimmer. Now, look at all the other silver, silver purple shimmer eyeshadows. That one there? Yeah, no. Nah. This is it. I think that's the prettiest shimmery purple out of all of them. All right, and one last palette. This one is the Jaclyn Hill Bling Boss eyeshadow palette. This is from their Vault eyeshadow palette collection. And I'm just gonna take that shade called Gem, and this is the last one. This one is a purple shimmer, but a dark purple shimmer. Now, where am I gonna put this one? I've run out of space on my shoulder. Let's go here. That was the easiest purple swatch ever. Okay, I think I have my verdict, folks. <laughs> all right, you guys, out of all these 18 eyeshadow palettes and all of these shadows, I have found the most purplest purples that I have in my collection. Now, I'm gonna break it down. I think I've found three. Now, as far as lighter, silvery purple shadows goes, the Juvia's Place Magic Eyeshadow Palette in the shade Faso. This one is a beautiful, light, silver type of purple shimmery shadow. Blends absolutely beautiful. Very, very smooth. The pigment is there, and even on this first swatch, it felt amazing. Now, as far as a matte purple goes, the shade Gumdrop from the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker eyeshadow palette is the winner. Unfortunately, I didn't find a matte purple that did the job. All of them felt very patchy and just not worth recommending. Like none of them. I wouldn't buy any of the palettes for those shadows. They were just too patchy, too dry, and I think that just might be the nature of the color purple. I have yet to find someone to create a dark matte type of purple like this color here, but in a matte shade. All of them were just patchy. I can't recommend any of them. But for a light purple that shade gumdrop is beautiful it looks like it literally looks like a lolly and you can see you can't even see my skin through that swatch it is such a vibrant matte purple now, as far as a dark shimmery purple goes this one from the Jaclyn Hill vault collection in the palette bling boss is the winner the shade gem it's a gem it's absolutely gorgeous like look at that that is just so pretty it's vibrant it's smooth I have used that shade on my eyes before as well and it is absolutely beautiful. From what I remember, it actually stained my eyelids. That's how pigmented that purple was. All right, you guys, so that's it for this video. <laughs> Thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you for watching this video. I really, truly appreciate it. If you wanted to purchase any of these palettes for the sake of the purple in that palette, then maybe this video was helpful for you to know whether or not buying the palette for that purple was worth it. I know purple is an incredibly difficult shadow to find in a good, swatchable, wearable, blendable, creamy formula. 
now. Just getting my fingers into all this makeup and remembering what I've got and picking out the shadows and playing with it, just having the makeup on my skin and on my fingers, it brings me a lot of joy. So I think I'm going to enjoy making this a series. I don't know if you guys are going to enjoy watching it, but if you enjoy swatches, you find it as satisfying than I do, then maybe you might find this series enjoyable if not anything else. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hey guys. <coughs> the more gray people, the more grayish taupey type, type of, this is from their, this one is from, if you wanted to purple.